Good day. In this video, we're going to use these three diagrams to answer questions on angles in trigonometry on the Cartesian plane. I assume you know your cast diagram. In the first quadrant, we have an A, S, T, C, R, L, R, I, M. All students take coffee. Here, all the ratios are positive. Sine and cosec is positive, tan and cot is positive, and cos and sec is positive. I also assume that you know your basic ratios and their relations from Sokatua. Sine is O over H, cos A over H, and tan O over A. If you have a right angle triangle and you're standing in this angle, this is my opposite, this is my adjacent, and this is my hypotenuse. You also should know that your adjacent side is always x, the one opposite the angle you're talking from is y, and the one opposite the 90 degrees is r. Please stop the video and get your brain around this. If you, is anything on this page you don't understand, please stop the video and don't watch further. There's also the reciprocals that we will not use in this video. Please remember sine theta is O over H, but it's the same as y over r. Cos is x over r, and tan is y over x. For this video. This is our first question. Determine 12 sine alpha tan alpha if, without using a calculator, 4 cos alpha plus 3 is equal to 0 and alpha lies between 0 degrees and 180 degrees included. This that we have to work out we're going to leave until last. They gave us this to work with and we will now on a Cartesian plane set up a diagram. We first get this name and the angle alone. So I take the plus 3 to the other side, minus 3 on both sides. Then I divide by 4 on both sides and I get cos alpha is minus 3 over 4. Cos we know is adjacent over hypotenuse. So for the purpose of this video we're going to go for x over r. Now we bring this information and this information together in a plan on the Cartesian plane. This part says cos is negative, and cos is negative in the second and third quadrant. I tick it there, and I make a tick there. This part says the angle we're looking for lies between 0 degrees and 180 degrees. So we're going to be in that quadrant or that quadrant. Now, where they're both happy, that's where we're going to be. There's two ticks here. We're going to work in the second quadrant. So I draw my terminal ray in the third quadrant, and then back to the x-axis perpendicular. There is where the angle is, alpha, and I fill in this information on my sketch. It says here minus 3 over 4, which is x over r. So the x value is minus 3, and the radius is 4. I always write the minus 3 down there too. So we have the hypotenuse, and we have the adjacent. We have to work out the opposite, the y value. Now we use Pythagoras. Pythagoras says, if you want to work out y, you go y squared equals to r squared minus x squared. Now you substitute these values into this formula. In brackets, please. The radius is 4, and the x is minus 3. Then you simplify, and you get y squared equals 7. Square root both sides, you get y equals to plus or minus 7. Now you must decide... Is it going to be a plus or a minus 7 here? In this case, it will be plus 7 because we are above the x-axis. We write the plus square root of 7 in on the Cartesian plane. Now we use this diagram combined with our ratios to answer this question. Of course, our ratios are always fractions. I change everything to fractions. Make this a 12 over 1. Sine is y over r, you stand here, y is square root of 7, over r is 4, that's where I got this from, and tan from here is y over x, I stand here, y is square root of 7, and x is minus 3, that's where I got this from. Always write this alpha inside the triangle and cross it out, it's just easier to work from here to see your adjacent, hypotenuse, and opposite, although we're going to work with x, y, and r. Now if you times this out, you'll get minus 7. So the answer of this question is minus 7. 
Please stop the video and make sure you understand what happened from the beginning to the end. The next question is a mouthful. They say if 4 tan alpha minus 3 equals to 0 and that alpha lies between 180 degrees and 360 degrees, then also they tell us 2 cos beta minus 1 is equal to 0 and that beta is where sine beta is smaller than 0. Evaluate or calculate 12 tan squared beta minus 10 sine alpha without using a calculator. So we're going to have a diagram for alpha and a separate diagram for beta. I'm going to do the alpha part first. I'm going to get the name and the alpha alone using equations. I first plus 3 on both sides, so I get 4 tan alpha equals to 3. Then I divide by 4. So I get tan alpha equals to plus 3 over 4. And tan is y over x or o over a. Now we plan. They told us that tan alpha is positive. That means he will be in the first or third quadrant. Then they told me alpha is an element of between 180 and 360. So that's either there or there. That means we'll be working in the third quadrant. So we draw a Cartesian plane. Draw the terminal ray in the third quadrant back to the x-axis perpendicular and fill this information in. They said y is 3, so that's a 3, which your y value is minus 3. And they said yeah, x is 4, so I put in the 4 there, but my x is minus 4. Remember, although there's a plus over there, they both minuses. x is negative here and y is negative down here. So remember to put in the minuses extra. Now we always have to work out the remaining side, in this case the r, or the hypotenuse. r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared from Pythagoras. Fill in the values in brackets. Simplify. So r squared is 25. Your square root, your answer is r is plus or minus 5. And your radius is always positive, so it's r is plus 5. We fill that in on the sketch. And just now we can use this diagram to solve this problem. Now we draw up a diagram for beta using th these two pieces of information. I get the cos beta alone, I take the minus 1, plus 1 on both sides, get 1, then divide by 2, so I get cos beta is plus 1 over 2, which is x over r, a over h. Because cos beta is positive, it means we will be in the first or fourth quadrant. Then they said sine of this beta is smaller than zero, which means negative, and sine is negative in the third and fourth quadrant. That means we will work in the fourth quadrant. So we will draw our terminal ray in the fourth quadrant, then align back perpendicular to the x-axis. Cos is x over r, 1 over 2, so x is 1, and r is 2. I still have to work out what y is. So from there to there is 1 unit, and from there to there is 2 units. I have the x value, I'm looking for the y value. Like I told you, I'd like to write the beta inside this triangle and cross it out. But it is actually that angle over there. We'll use Pythagoras. If you want to work out y, you'll go y squared equals to r squared minus x squared. Fill in the values in brackets. Simplify it, and you're going to get y squared equals to 3. Then if you square root both sides, you're going to get y equals to plus or minus the square root of 3. Then we go into the picture and check if the y's are going to be negative or positive here. And you'll see y is negative square root of 3 because it's under the x-axis. Here is the second diagram I can now use. Please stop the video and get your brain around these calculations. Now we use these two diagrams and our ratios to determine this answer. Tan of beta, we read from this diagram. Tan is y over x. If I stand here, y is square root of minus 3 and x is 1. Remember to put it in brackets with a square. Minus 10 over 1. Sine of alpha will read out of this diagram. Sine is y over r. If this is my angle, 
y is minus 3 and r is 5 that we write in a bracket here. Now from bed maths, bot maths, you do this part first. It gives you 3, so 12 times 3 plus 6 is the answer from here. Final answer, 42. Please stop the video and get your brain around this. Please indicate whether you liked or disliked the video and subscribe to the channel. Enjoy working on the Cartesian plane.